Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. I'm back from my short holiday and I've rejoined events in the chess world at a really fascinating stage because the Chennai Olympiad is taking place and by all accounts it's a great success. We're at the halfway point, they've just had the free day, but I'm going to just take you right back to round one. I'm just catching up with events and I want to look at the game between Alexei Shirov and Gregors Tocek. Apologies for my pronunciation. So this is in the Spain against Wales match. And of course, well, I like to follow Alexei Shirov, such an entertaining player. And this game makes me think of, well, Mikhail Tal, actually. That, and, of course, Shirov is uh, also from uh, Latvia, originally from Latvia. And this is absolutely in, in the, the Tal style, in the, in the Latvian school of chess. And it makes me think of that wonderful... Um, saying from Mikhail Tal, you must take your opponent into a deep, dark forest where 2 plus 2 equals 5 and the path leading out is only wide enough for 1. And this is a classic example. So it starts out as, well, it's a philidor. Of course, here one can play into the end game. But that's not for Shirov today. He plays knight f3, and now he plays his patent system. He was the very first to play this pawn sacrifice back in 2003, and it's become quite popular since then. And Shirov has enjoyed great success with the, this move. It's just great. I mean, it, this just shows his style all over. He's prepared just to give up a pawn almost at the very start of the game just to get an open file for that rook. And it just makes it much more difficult for black to develop when you can't play the natural bishop b7. And I think this is a very nice system to play against those Philidor players who want to play, you know, the kind of set moves. And they really have to be extremely careful from this moment on. Because already white is threatening the devastating knight g5. And bishop e7, as mentioned, well, probably falls into several things. But rook g7 simply is pretty nasty. Um, well, in fact, yes, apart from, I mean, the obvious rook g7. But I'm also looking at this move as well which looks like great fun, knight g5, and then knight e6, hitting the queen and threatening rook g7 mate. So bishop b7 is bad for all kinds of reasons. Let's come back here. So h6 in order to prevent knight g5, but again, that represents a slight weakness in black's position. If black is having to consume so much time making this move things aren't good. Sure of us played bishop b3 before in this position but today he goes for the exchange on e5. He's also played like this as well. Bishop b3 and white's idea is simply to develop very quickly, move the queen out and cast the queen side. c6 that covers these important squares and makes room for the queen as well. Queen d3 and here, uh, Shirov's opponent played b5. Previously, Shirov has faced queen c7. And he won very quickly with this sacrifice. And this is so typical of this line. Knight h4. And here's what I meant by the weakness with h6. Because suddenly that g6 square is available. And this is absolutely crushing. And Shirov won in a couple more moves like this. In fact, Shirov's opponent resigned in this position. Exchange, Shirov's the exchange up and, 
with a still with a very powerful attack. Anyway, on this day, b5 was played, which is still a pretty risky move. You know, the position is starting to open up. Um, Nepo once played this in a blitz game, and it was good enough to win in a blitz game, but it's probably not very good. In fact, black is okay in this position. Um, it's pretty crazy. But anyway, bishop b3 is the sensible move here. If one can be sensible already in this position. And here Shirov played castle's queenside. In fact, the machine thinks that a4 is a better move here. But anyway, castle's looks absolutely terrifying for black considering the king is still in the middle of the board. Bishop a6. So now there's a threat to play b4, opening up this line from the bishop. So knight d2, which looks like a slightly funny move. You know, white is having to go backwards. Uh, the point is that after b4, then that knight spins to c4. And if that's taken, then... This looks pretty nasty. And if takes here, then actually this is good for white. So rook d8 played. That also supports the knight and puts it on the same line as the queen. Now queen f1, which, you know, it feels as though white is going backwards here. Well, white has just gone backwards. But still, this is a very scary position for black to play. And, well, there have been a, a, a few games played from this position. Um, Shirov's opponent played c5 here, and it's probably not the best move. Um, and I find this is a very interesting moment, because, you know, one might imagine that Shirov, well, he's he was the originator of this line. He's played it several times with success. And you'd think that he would know this kind of position backwards. But here, well, it's clear that he's, he feels his way through the opening. You know, he's not someone that sits down and prepares lots of computer analysis. If he had been that kind of person, he'd have seen that F4 is the recommended move of computers here. Just giving up that bishop. And in fact, white has... A fantastic initiative here. You know, obviously it's still not possible to develop that bishop because the g-pawn drops and black is in massive trouble in this position. Instead, after c5, Shirov played knight d5. Now, if knight takes and bishop takes, then that solves white's problems with the bishop and white still has a very nice attack here. You know, f4 potentially coming. So after knight d5, Shirov's opponent, Tocek, played c4, which in a sense is a good practical move because it cuts out that bishop. And now, well, you've got to give up the bishop anyway, but this is feels like a, a fairly natural sacrifice. Now, can you find your way out of this one? In fact, the computers think that black is still okay here, but finding a way through this, well, good luck with that in a, in a practical game. Um, if you're interested in researching this, then the best continuation for black is actually to exchange here and then play bishop d6, which is a very unlikely looking move considering that that bishop is on a very in, in a very insecure position on the d file and white can take here on g7 so it's hardly surprising that black didn't manage to find the correct defense here and the game went bishop b7 bishop d2 now black's queen gets pushed around here this is rather unpleasant and now the game starts to look like that famous game of Paul Morphy's, the, the, the Opera House game um, from 1858, uh, Morphy against the Duke of Brunswick and others. 
with you know these the the queenside pawns disappeared and there are pins on the d file and well potentially a pin here it's already extremely difficult for black this is the game continuation bishop takes bishop a6 queen h3 that queen bounces out to a very threatening position you can see there are already some very nasty pins here Knight b6, well that blocks that one. Queen h5 now, that queen comes to h5, threatening queen f7 mate, but also threatening the e-pawn. Now, it seems like queen c7 is the only move to defend covering both those pawns, but watch what happens. Bishop takes pawn check, and this is fatal. Check. Obviously, the king can't leave the protection of the queen. Well, there's there's no defense here. And the bishop check, and then queen f5 mate, for example. So black is in massive trouble here. Rook d7, covers f7. This is the game. Queen takes pawn check. Rook e7, well, that's pretty sorry, isn't it, when the rook actually blocks the bishop. Queen comes back, queen takes, queen check. And now rook d7 is the only way to continue, but this is very nasty. Um, white is a piece down, but how is black going to find security in this position? It's very unlikely. But in fact, after queen a4 check, black made a fatal mistake. Queen d7 and rook d5 and this really does look like the opera house game because after this well here black resigned if queen takes queen then rook d8 is checkmate so this is really something that it could have been played by morphe straight out of the 19th century so alexei shirov on well fantastic form at least in round one He's actually playing board one for Spain, and well, he does have a plus score, but he's he's uh, meeting some tom of tough opposition. Anyway, always good to see Alexei Shirov playing in this fashion. Great stuff. Um, I should say we're at the halfway point in the Olympiad, and it's just a fascinating contest today. Uh, for example, there's a match between Armenia, who are actually leading against the USA, who have a very strong team. Um, but the Indian teams, all three Indian teams, are doing extremely well, and they're just behind. Uh, and in the women's uh, competition, then India are leading there. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like Chennai is a great venue, and the Indian team's doing extremely well. But anyway, I will report back on events and let you know exactly what's happening. Thanks for watching.